Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Lane McCall here and today we are finally going to finish up this little two-part mini video series I did about metering and TTL. Alright, so before we get started, you really need to click the link up here above if you have not seen my metering and exposure slash flash compensation video. You must understand those three things before you dive into TTL. If you don't fully understand those, you will not have a successful TTL photo shoot. That's why I split those videos up because there's so much content in there that you need to understand. And now today we're just going to talk about TTL by itself, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so TTL stands for through the lens. TTL reads primarily off the meter that you set inside of your camera, as well as the compensation dials that you have dialed in, okay? Now I'm gonna pull up my phone periodically just to make sure I don't miss anything, okay? Now, this is going to be in the blog that I'll be linking down below in the description. So if you're interested in reading about everything TTL and metering, go ahead and click that link because I think you'll find that interesting. Now, TTL is for the most part used in events or in areas where, you know, photographers really need to get popping. You know, they're going to be in different lighting scenarios and whatnot. TTL was created so that the camera can meter the light for you and give you a digitally perfect exposure based off those readings. Now the reason I put in quotations like digitally perfect is because it might be perfect to the camera sensor, but to us as a human, it might not actually be correct. All right, so for an example, let's say you're in spot metering mode. I just put spot on my A7R2, and let's give a scenario where you know maybe you're shooting at a black backdrop with a model that's wearing mostly all black okay if you were to point this at her it might look something like that super overexposed and super ugly so that's why you really need to be careful with which metering mode you choose to correlate with your ttl now i'm going to go ahead and set up my transmitter to do ttl right now And I got TTL right there. All right, so now that I have TTL set up on my transmitter and it was already set up on my flash here, now I can start firing, right? Now, what you need to understand is TTL, it usually sends a pre-flash before the actual flash. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but whenever you go to take a photo, you might have caught that. It goes pop, pop, really quick. Sometimes so quick that you don't even know that there's two pops in there. The only reason why I know is because I, I'm a nerd with this TTL stuff. So is what's happening is it's going to send a pre-flash. And whatever it does, that flash is gonna bounce back into the camera sensor. It's gonna meter that, do its little algorithm thing, and send a signal to your transmitter and be like, hey, we need this flash output to give the most perfect exposure. So that is how TTL works. Now TTL might work slightly different depending on what camera manufacturer and or light system you're using. I've got Sony proprietary stuff right here, but it works exactly the same with Flashpoint. As a matter of fact, I think my Flashpoint R2 system is even easier than these two right here. All you have to do is go to your Explorer or one of your uh, speed lights, set that to TTL, and start firing. If you wanna adjust the compensation, all you have to do is use that little scroll wheel on the right hand side of that transmitter to get the flash compensation that you want with your images. Now the last thing you really need to understand about TTL and why some professionals kind of frown on it is because for the longest time it was considered not accurate. Now, when I say not accurate, I mean like the flash output might be slightly different than the one right before it. So you could get slightly different results whenever you're using TTL. Now, a lot of the pros that say that, they're guys that's been in the photography business for you know 15 plus years or such. The TTL readings on the Sony gear and even my Flashpoint R2 system is absolutely amazing. I admit TTL isn't something that I use a lot just because I like to be in full manual control of my gear, but it has given me that flexibility at certain press conference events or what have you to be able to go out there and I literally had my light on a dolly and I'm going around taking photos of the event and I was getting near perfect results every image. 
All right, so the last thing you really need to understand about TTL is a lot of professionals kind of frown on it. The reason being is because for the longest time, TTL was kind of inaccurate. Now, these guys, you know, the true working professionals that's been doing this 15 plus years, I'm sure TTL sucked back then, but now it's 2018 and this Sony system and even my Flashpoint R2 system has super accurate results at almost every image. So I personally do not think TTL is that inaccurate. However, you can slightly see a few shifts from image to image and that's what we're gonna go through right now and see if I can find any. So I'm gonna put my camera in multi-metering mode because that's probably gonna give the most inconsistent results since that it's metering everything, you know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and lock down this tripod here and I'm going to go ahead and set my exposure compensation to what I think is a pretty good value, just kind of eyeballing it here. And I'm going to take five pictures. Now let's take a look at these pictures as I shift through them. All right, so you can see a slight shift over here between 59 and 60. That, that's what the professionals are talking about. 59 is slightly darker than 60. And then you go through the rest though, I wanna say the final three images are almost perfect. I mean, they look, I mean, I couldn't even tell I was shifting through the images if it wasn't for the image counter in the bottom right hand corner. But that slight shift to me isn't a deal breaker. I'm sure to the top notch modeling photographers in the world, they might be like, no, that is absolutely unacceptable. That's okay. Cause like I said, even I use manual mode whenever I'm doing photo shoots here at the house and even on location. But TTL can be very handy and much quicker because you no longer necessarily have to carry around a metering device with you to meter the light, the ambient, and whatever you're flashing at the model. So, just to let you all know that this Sony system is very good and so is the Flashpoint R2 system. All right, so I really hope that you were able to learn something from this and the reason why I set all this stuff up in my little small home studio was to make this video as intuitive and professional as possible. If you thought this was a good video and you learned something, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for those weekly uploads. All right, guys? so. Go ahead and tag me in all your social media work. Just hashtag Lamacall Creative. I'm starting to go through that hashtag and see what all you guys are working on, okay? And it, just remember that if there's anything that you all would like to know how to do and learn, just shoot me a message or comment down below what you would like to see next. I mean, this guy commented just last week and here it is the very next week and I've already got a video for him. So it's that simple with me. Just be sure to reach out to me and let me know what you all would like to see more of, okay? So as always, get out there, start shooting, and have some fun. My name's Lynn McCall.